All right, so we'd like to continue. <clears throat> so we left off in the uh, last lesson. We created a file using graph edit. And the file is right over here. And we even played it. Now I'd like to play it using graph edit. All right, so let's run another graph edit. I can right button click the graph edit and hit this graph edit. That's a Windows 7 feature. <clears throat> That's not a direct show feature. And this is the new graph edit. Notice that this is the previous graph edit. So they're right next to each other. And what I'd like to do is simply drag the ASF file onto this graph edit. And what I get is a graph that plays the file, the rendering graph. And this is <coughs> similar to, the, to this diagram the same idea right we have a component that reads from the file let's go see it this is the component that reads from the file and it reads bits of data from the file it takes these bits of data it's actually called a sample so th the first component that has the name of the file that's not the file that's a, a software component that's responsible for digging or reaching into the file and taking out of it a sample of audio and then it passes this sample of audio to the AVI splitter and this splitter splits the stream right so we already said well but there's only one stream so that's not true we created a graph that takes two streams and pours them into one stream and pours them into the file theoretically there is two streams it's a multiplexed audio video stream the fact that there's no data coming in from the second pin doesn't change the fact that the format of the output pin is that of audio video intertwined so the format of the file is audio video so when we read from the file we're reading intertwined audio video so we need to split them so the splitter splits them into separate audio there is no separate video so so it doesn't expose a second pin for the audio the second, the, the only pin, the only output pin that the splitter exposes is the audio pin and when we dragged the file onto, di onto the graph edit excuse me so graph edit created the graph for us and it created, it added over here a direct sound renderer which, it, which exposes the functionality of the speakers All right, and the graph, the, di the the graph edit application already connected these two pins. Notice that if I delete this filter, the rendering filter, and I right button click and I render the pin, I get it back. Notice also that if I play it, the graph, it seems to be running. Let's let's resize and minimize and minimize. Right. Those are That's the recorded file. Notice that while I'm playing, the clock turns yellow. But we'll come back to this later. All right. Also notice that if I remove both of these filters, cannot remove until I stop. Let's stop. Mark. Remove. Right button click. Render. Again, that's what I get. Notice also that if I disconnect and then render it reconnects notice notice that if I disconnect and render it reconnects alright so very nice so so this is so basically what happens when we invoke the 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 graph builders render file what happens is that we're telling it we're telling you could say that we're telling the gray Please, re please create the graph that will render the file. So it adds this filter 
and then it adds this filter and then it adds this filter and then it connects these filters that's what a graph manager or a graph builder is good for it's a very powerful class a very powerful interface all right very nice Okay, so so that's very nice. So let's go back to our code now. And basically, again, what we are doing when we are writing direct show applications, when we're writing code, ultimately we're doing what Graph Edit does. Graph Edit behind the scenes is also doing these things. When I say when I drag a file from the desktop, when when I run a Graph Edit app application instance. All right, so maybe it just creates a a graph uh, builder. Right, what's the name of the class? The name of the class is filter graph. A class, a filter graph class, and it exposes the iGraph builder interface. Very nice. And then when I drag a file onto it, I'm telling I'm I'm telling the P graph in the graph edit application. Please, I'm just invoking render file on the name of the file that I dragged onto the graph edit application. Notice that I can run another instance of graph edit and I can say file render media, media file. And I could choose from the desktop one ASF open I get the same result that's identical to dragging the file onto the gray of the graph edit application very nice all right we, we don't need all these instances of graph edit we just basically we don't need we, we need none of them so we can close all of them we don't need to save any of them very nice again graph edit comes with the installation of the Windows SDK Notice that the the name seems to be graph edit, but the executable name is graph edit. It's graph. If you look for graph edit, so you, you get graph edit error lookup. That's something else. There is no graph edit, so you you're perplexed. What's going on? But if you write graph edit, there's also nothing there. But maybe dot exe exe and enter maybe if you search the computer maybe uh, it will find it we'll let it run in the background we'll come back to it it should be able to find it in any case if you want the link where it is it might help you so it's in C program files Microsoft you know what let me take it from here I'll give it to you uh, I'll put it in the summary, uh, in the description of the recording. So uh, I'll put it over here, like this. So you have it. That's the default path to the application. Very nice, very nice. Has it been found? Not yet. All right, we'll give it a little bit more time. Okay. Uh, we, we can actually see the name, right? You see, you see here, it's Graph Edit, and it comes with the uh, Microsoft Windows 7.1 SDK, but whatever version is uh, up to date now. Okay, so what we need now is to put here the name of the file. So let's get the file name. Has it been found? Not yet. All right. So the name of the file, one way to get, one of the best ways to get the name of a file is like this. I don't know if it will, it used to work in Windows 7, it used to, not, would not work. It used to throw it in the run, maybe run, delete, and drag this onto here. That's a good way of getting the path of a file. Alright, so copy, cancel back to our code and simply control V now the backslashes need to be double backslash because we're in the C and C++ programming language otherwise they are escape characters the backslash is a setup for an escape character 
All right, so for control character. All right, so F10 maybe. F10, F10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It took a while. I don't know if you noticed. I, I certainly felt it. And this time, render file returned as OK, which is 0. So everything is good. Fantastic. All right. That's good. OK, so the next step, I guess, would be to actually play the file from within our code. Okay, let's do that. Has it been found? Searching for items. Still searching. All right. Guess it's not finished. Okay, so let's go back to the MSDN. Let's go back to the tutorial. Now, in order to play a file, we need to invoke We'll, we'll come back to the code just above in a second. We will need to invoke the run method of the control interface that pgraph, see, media control, the p control comes from invoking this, this, this function, this line. We'll, come, we'll, we'll, we'll study it immediately. But basically, the pgraph exposes another interface, a control interface, and, and we'll, uh, we'll ask the pgraph, the graph builder, to expose the control interface and to point a control variable, pointer, at this control interface. These are all COM ideas. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss them a little bit in a second. And using this new control variable pointer, we're going to invoke run. And run is basically the clicking of the run button in the graph edit application, right? So if you remember, I click the run button in order to run the graph. All right. So since we're running out of time, so we'll do this in the next lecture. So as always, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.